Hey, and welcome back to Sydney Trains Vlogs, and welcome to the 2024 Halloween episode. Today, we are off to Junee. Junee is home to the most haunted house in Australia, known as Monte Cristo. So today, we are heading down there by coach the whole way due to track work. Um, staying the night and in the morning, we'll be exploring Monte Cristo and then getting the XPT back to Campbelltown and coach back to Sydney. So this video will feature a little bit of the trip uh, on the coach down to Junee. I might show you a little bit of Juni itself. Tomorrow morning, um, I'll film Monte Cristo and uh, some of the XPT trip back uh, to Campbelltown and coach back to Sydney. So sit back and enjoy this Halloween episode. And thank you for watching. Service Center. Not too far to Juni from here, an hour or two maybe. Made it to Juni. All right, it's the next morning. Currently just walking to the Monte Cristo homestead now. All right, we've arrived at Monte Cristo. We've got just under an hour until it opens. There's a gift shop there and it's also the uh, where you purchase tickets to get in. It's about $15 or so. That's quite the tourist attraction. It's also pretty well classed as a museum. Very exciting. So while walking here, we actually randomly, very randomly, walked past the 48 class, which is 4859, I think it is, I can see from here. And a couple of old Sydney double-deck buses. It's Stuntman and Daredevil Hall of Fame Australia opening soon. So I guess that these daredevils will end up jumping the locomotives and buses, or locomotive and buses. Now let me give you a bit of history about Monte Cristo, Australia's most haunted house. Let's go back to the beginning. Christopher and Elizabeth Crawley. They were husband and wife that lived in a small 1876 built brick cottage which still exists today behind the main homestead. The Crawleys had built the main house which started construction in 1884. Both Mr. and Mrs. Crawley died at the house, with Christopher dying in 1910 from heart failure and blood poisoning from a carbuncle on his neck, which got infected. After her husband's death, Elizabeth became a recluse, locking herself in the house, rarely leaving. Elizabeth died 23 years later in 1933 due to a burst appendix. The last of the Crawley family left the house in 1948, where it had laid abandoned and eventually vandalised for over a decade. In 1963, Monte Cristo Homestead was bought by Reginald and Olive Ryan, who restored the abandoned shell of Monte Cristo back to its former glory. When the Ryans moved into the homestead, they noticed something wasn't quite right when various things started to happen, ranging from their pets not wanting to go anywhere near the homestead, to one night when they came back from an evening out. They noticed there was lights on. 
Then when they opened the door into the homestead, all the lights were off. Kind of creepy. The homestead hadn't always had a great past, though. I mean, you don't really get the title of Australia's most haunted house for nothing, right? There are several ghosts that remain at Monte Cristo, including Mr. and Mrs. Crawley, a maid who died instantly by jumping off the balcony, a stable boy named Morris who was burned alive in the coach house where people still hear screams today, Ethel Crawley, who was the granddaughter of Christopher and Elizabeth Crawley, died after being dropped on the stairs by the nursemaid. You can still see the bleach mark on the stairs where the maid landed, the one who jumped from the balcony. Another ghost is that of Jack Simpson, who was one of the home's caretakers. He was shot to death on the porch in front of the house by a young man. This young bloke had repeatedly watched Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho before shooting Jack. The words, die Jack, ha ha, were written on the dairy room door in chalk and is actually still visible to this day. Monte Cristo today is still owned by the Ryan family. Now, unfortunately, Reginald Ryan passed away in 2014. You can visit Monte Cristo every Saturday, Sunday, and public holiday for $15. It's where you can walk around the place and just admire the beauty of it. So sit back and enjoy a walk through Monte Cristo, Australia's most haunted homestead. I've put some piano music in the background because there was um, actually music playing in the background in the house and, um, you know, copyright and all that kind of stuff. Enjoy.
very beautiful. Now, before we uh, have a look at the grounds, uh, one thing that I will point out is that this is this is the owner's home. Uh, the owners do live here. Uh, so if you do want to come and visit, you can do so on Saturdays, Sundays, and public holidays. It costs $15 to get in. Uh, they're very nice people. And they uh, also um, have a bit of a gift shop there as well. So you can um, take home a little, uh, what would you call it, a little memento. So this building we're going into now is the original homestead. This was built before Monte Cristo, before the main house. Now the cottage or the building that we're walking to now is the dairy room. The dairy room is where a boy named Harold Steele was chained up for some years and you'll be able to actually see a little hole and chain sticking out. And in 1960, there was a guy named Jack Simpson, which was shot on the porch of the, um, of the main house uh, there in 1960. And apparently, you can see on the shed door, so I'm guessing by shed they mean dairy room, um, that it says, die Jack, ha ha. I'm going to actually try and find that in a minute. Harold Steele unfortunately suffered from some um, mental issues and when he was found chained up next to his dead mother, he was then sent to an asylum where he later died. So we're just heading to the carriage display now. Now on our little sheet that we have showing some information about what's what and what's where and everything like that, uh, there's a spooky fact that uh, Reg Ryan, um, who's the owner of Monte Cristo, um, his ghost had been seen in the carriage display here three months after his passing. So this homemade bread, the T.H. Wilkinson cart, um, 
says the baker's cart circa 1900, used up to the 1950s to deliver fresh, freshly baked bread door to door. And there's the stables. Curious as to where this carving, the die jack carving is. Couldn't see it on the dairy room door. So with the original homestead, we've actually missed a room. <laughs> so we're gonna go over and see that. Now, with the bloke that was shot in 1960, he was shot because um, the person who shot him had uh, watched Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho a number of times before doing what he did. So just quickly, uh, we're back in the dairy room and I asked uh, asked one of the owners here if, I, um, if she could tell me a bit about this die jack ha ha carving. Turns out it's not actually a carving. It's marks from chalk that are very strongly faded. So you've got the D from die. It's supposed to say die jack ha ha. You know, look for it. Look at it. A certain way but you do see what I mean either way very interesting and one of the last spots in here to look at is the ballroom on the sheet it says that there's, there's been many photos of ghosts captured in here and, uh, and in the carriage display, which we saw before. So the original ballroom was demolished and rebuilt in 1970. So on the sheet it says that many ghosts have been seen in the ballroom and carriage display and I thought by carriage display it was the one that you saw before but there's actually another one through the doors here which we'll check out in just a moment.
So one thing with the stables, just quickly as well, something that I was just reading on our little map with information, is that uh, a little boy was burnt alive when his boss set a straw mattress that he was sleeping on a light. So the little boy decided he uh, wanted to sort of sleep in, I guess, because he wasn't feeling well. Uh, the boss didn't really give a rat's ass about that. Um, set the mattress on fire to, uh, you know, get him up and out of bed, but um, turns out he really was sick and uh, burned alive. Okay, so that's all for Monte Cristo. Bit of a gruesome history of the place, but um, I thought it would make for a good Halloween video. But anyway, um, back to the rest of the video and the trip back to Sydney. All right, finished up with Monte Cristo. That is crossing the rail line to visit the chocolate factory. And then going to head to grab something to eat and then go to Juni Station and wait for the train and hopefully something will pass in the meantime. Made it to Juni. The XPT we're getting back to Campbelltown where we'll meet the coach back to Sydney. Um, that XPT is currently a Wagga Wagga so it'll be here within 40 or so minutes give or take. Not sure if anything will come through while we're here. Actually just had lunch at the pub across the road and um, there was actually quite a bit of action then but obviously kicking back and having some lunch I didn't want to have to get up and everything like that but we'll see if anything comes through but anyway um, I will film bits and pieces of the trip on the XPT. It's an old semaphore signal.
Australia and here comes our train. I was hoping to see the Melbourne bound one before Sydney came in, but um, Sydney's here a bit early. That's all right.
I'd made it back to Sydney. Decided just to kick back on the bus. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. It's such a good trip. Um, never, never actually seen Juni before. I've been past it on the train a number of times, but never, never had the chance of actually walking around there. I completed one of the things on my bucket list, which was to see Monte Cristo, uh, which I hope you all enjoyed. Um, that full video, separate video, uh, Monte Cristo is on uh, my Abandoned Oz channel um, now as well. But anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, share the video, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you soon. Happy Halloween.